Hello everybody, at long last it's here, my 2012 Big 12 team by team previews and this episode is all about Rock Chalk Jayhawk and Kansas. The following few seconds are going to sound like a television archived intro, so forgive me. Good day Mr. Weiss, word has it from Lawrence, Kansas that you are the new head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks. Your mission, should you and your coaching staff decide to accept it, will be to guide Kansas toward one, football improvement, and number two, a level of respect. If you fail, then you're no better than the guy we just fired, and that's Turner Gill. Not accomplishing these missions could lead to destruction, which is something that we know way too well. Good luck, Charles. Is it Mission Impossible for Charlie Weiss to guide the Kansas Jayhawks to a level of respectability and to get them in bowl contention and eventually get them into Big 12 contention? And the answer to that is no, because we've seen Kansas do this before. Under Mark Mangino in the 2000s, Kansas had a level of respectability, got to bowl games. For crying out loud, they got to and won the Orange Bowl in 2007 and had a high ranking at the end of that year with a 12-1 and record. So you can't tell me that winning can't happen in Kansas because it's happened. And we're not talking about during the leather football helmet era. We're talking during the BCS era recently. There is a lot of work to be done in Kansas, and the Jayhawks are not going to go to a bowl game this year and probably not next year, and they're not going to be contending for Big 12 titles anytime soon. But what you're looking for if you're Kansas, you're looking for improvement from the offense and especially from the defense, and you're looking for a change of attitude, and you're looking also for players who really want to be committed to the football program. And I believe that Weiss will weed out the players that don't want to make that commitment, and I believe over time he's going to do a good job of recruiting both him and the new defensive coordinator, Dave Campo. Let's go ahead and start with the offense. Key number one, Dane Christ. Now, that name is going to sound familiar, and that's because he got some hype when he played at Notre Dame. But basically, that's all it was, hype, because it didn't pan out at South Bend. Christ, who was recruited, by the way, by Charlie Weiss when he was at Notre Dame, now the two are reunited, and not only is Weiss the head coach, but he's also the offensive coordinator. So Weiss will definitely have a lot of overseeing over that offense, especially at the QB position. If Chris, who's got the potential but's never really lived up to it, cannot get the job done, don't be surprised if new JUCO transfer Turner Brady gets his shot. And by the way, um, BYU quarterback Jake Heaps, he didn't work out last year with BYU. He's decided to transfer to Kansas as well, but he won't be available till 2013. The wide receivers, I think, are going to be a plus for Kansas because they're talented in this area. And they also are deep in this area, starting with Damon Patterson, probably the best of the bunch. DJ Bashirs is a speedster, and he'll also play on special teams for turning kicks. Kel Pick, might remember him from a while back. He was quarterback for Kansas, but he's been converted to a uh, receiver, and he's actually done better at receiver than he ever did at QB. And also, you have uh, Justin McCray, former OU center, won't play this year, but will play in the year uh, 2013. The running game for Kansas, it was okay, but that's basically about it. James Sims, uh, we saw him with his speed last year against Oklahoma break one big for a touchdown in that game in Lawrence last season. He's back, but he'll miss the first three games of this year because of a misdemeanor charge during the offseason. Offensive line, this is going to be key number two. How will Kansas handle the offensive line shuffle? Easiest way to remember this is the players who played on the right side of the line last year for KU have now been moved to the left side. Probably the most talented lineman is going to be Tanner Hawkinson. He now will protect the blind side of Chris from the left tackle position. Left guard will be Dwayne Zlatnik. And other linemen coming back will include right tackle Riley Spencer and also Trevor uh, Marangeli moving from uh, guard to center. And occupying the rest of the line for Kansas will be right guard 
and uh, that is Gavin Howard. Offensively, I do think Kansas will be better because, for one, you got an offensive mind like Charlie Weiss, and number two, he specializes in his quarterbacks, and they do return enough receivers to where I think Kansas will show some progress on the offensive side. But now let's talk about the defense. Key number three, can the defense show a pulse? Going to give you some scores of opponents against Kansas from last season, teams that Kansas played, and how many points those opponents amassed. And it is really startling. 42 points they gave up against Northern Illinois, and Kansas won that game. But the following games, Kansas lost and lost huge. 66 against Georgia Tech, 46 against Texas Tech, 70 against Oklahoma State. 47 against OU, and OU played bad that game offensively and still hung nearly half a hundred. 43 against Texas, and 61 against Texas A&M. You kind of see where I'm going with this. Uh, Kansas last season giving up 40-something, 50-something, 60-something against o OSU, 70-something. And you could do those things against Kansas in 2011. And that meant that you could do anything you wanted to do against the Jayhawks in 2011. Bring on Dave Campo, the former Dallas Cowboy coach, will now bring his years of professional experience to a Jayhawk team that could use any type of help necessary. A few nice players Kansas does have. Defensive end uh, Tobin Opirum, who came to Kansas as an offensive player, would eventually play linebacker, but has settled in nicely at defensive end. But really, in my opinion, he's the only gem on that defensive line. The rest of the line was woeful in 2011. We mentioned about Opurum, and we also mentioned the fact um, that there's some other individual talent as well, including uh, Bradley McDougald, um, a terrific athlete from his safety spot, and corner in um, Greg Brown. But really, they are the three stars of a Kansas defense that doesn't even have mediocre talent. They were bad in 2011. Worst team in Division I in both points allowed, giving up about 43 a game, as well as yardage allowed, giving up well over 510. So Campo hopefully can install toughness, and hopefully he can get strength from a linebacking core that didn't deliver much in 2011, but they returned nearly everybody back in that department. So maybe some experience would help. Uh, Tundi uh, Bakari returns at one linebacker, and they'll also have back uh, Darius Willis from the middle linebacker position. The other linebacker will be occupied by Holden Tharp, who did not start last year. He now has to fill in those shoes as a starter. And another transfer from Notre Dame, we talked about Dane Christ earlier. How about on the defensive side where Anthony McDonald uh, should fit into the rotation at linebacker? He didn't pan out at Notre Dame either, despite the fact that he had a lot of billing and never even come close to meeting it. Special teams-wise, Kansas last season, defense and offense weren't the only problems. The special teams appropriately had their fits as well, especially kicking long field goals. Anything 30 yards or further, Kansas was more than likely going to miss, only hitting 3 of 9 from beyond 29 yards. Now, Ron Doherty, for the time being, is listed number one on the Kansas depth chart, not only as far as uh, place kicking, but punting as well. And... It wasn't just the fact that Kansas couldn't hit long field goals. It was the fact, too, that they had a very difficult time covering punts. So that has to be approved, and I'm sure that's an area that Charlie Weiss is not going to um, ignore whatsoever. A bright spot, though, for Kansas on special teams, as we mentioned earlier, um, DJ Bashirs, the wide receiver. Well, he's a speedster, and that means that he'll be returning kicks and punts. Did a good job in 2010, but last year his numbers did decline somewhat. So we'll see if uh, Bashirs uh, can get his uh, returns per kick and punt back up. And now talking about the Jayhawks schedule. And if you're a Kansas fan, really pay attention to the month of September. That is because compared to October, September is going to be a breeze. Opening the season against South Dakota State should spell a victory, even though you won't have running back James Sims. Following week will be a little bit tougher. You host Rice. Not impossible to beat the Owls, but it'll naturally be a tougher matchup than South Dakota State. I don't see any way on God's green earth that 
Kansas is going to beat TCU. You know the Horned Frogs will be fired up to play their first ever Big 12 game. The game's in Lawrence, but it doesn't matter where they play this game, Kansas is going to lose. And then the following week, you get James Sims back from the three-game suspension, the return game against Northern Illinois, and a thriller last year, Kansas edged out Northern Illinois by three points, but this time it's a road game, and Kansas, don't be surprised if they're an underdog entering that matchup. Then October, back to Big 12 play, and I don't see a single victory coming in the month of October for KU. At Kansas State, Kansas State has blown Kansas out each of the last two seasons. You host Oklahoma State, go to Oklahoma, close out October with Texas. November will let up a little bit, even though the next two games will be road games. At Baylor and at Texas Tech. Remember, Kansas should have beaten Baylor last year, had them down, but RG3 and company came from behind to edge out the Jayhawks. This year's game is in Waco, and Baylor won't be as talented, so maybe you can hang tough with the Bears. And then the following week at Texas Tech, remember, Tech plays Texas the week before and plays Oklahoma State the week after. Classic sandwich game. Maybe Tech overlooks Kansas just a little bit. And then maybe the best shot at a Big 12 win will come the following week when Kansas will host Iowa State. Get a week off, and then the last game of the season in early December in Morgantown, West Virginia will be heavily favored to defeat KU. I can see Kansas improving this year as opposed to last season for my final assessment, but it will be a slight improvement. A lot of transition, and again, the defense has to prove that they're not only better, but a lot better. The corners last season for Kansas in the secondary got whipped and whipped quite a bit. They just don't have enough team speed, in my opinion, on the defensive side to keep up with the really good offenses of the Big 12 Conference. I can see Kansas again improving, but just slight. I'm going to go 3-9 and nine for Kansas. And until proven otherwise, even with the coaching change, I don't see 2012 being a year where Kansas gets out of the Big 12 cellar. I see them finishing 10th. That's my look at Kansas. My next show will head to Austin, Austin, Texas, and talk about those Texas Longhorns. Catch you next time.